Okay, today's lesson is on density. Density is the amount of matter that occupies a certain space. Okay, so we're looking at a certain set of units that represent uh, density. And in terms of density, we're looking at the mass units per unit of volume. So it's mass divided by volume. So whatever units of mass you're using, divided by whatever units of volume that you're using. Density and color can be measured without forming a new substance. Okay, you've looked at in the previous uh, chapters, we looked at uh, physical and chemical properties. So measuring density, okay, as we've said before, is quantitative. Right? And quantitative is a physical property, as is color. So no new substance is formed. Okay, it's just a measurement that we're taking. Therefore, both density and color are physical properties. Now... Density as a characteristic physical property. Take a look at the two boxes below here. Each box has the same volume, right? So we're looking at it, so imagine a cube, and we fill the cube up with a whole bunch of balls and not as many balls, right? They both have the same volume, right? But if you were to measure the mass of the two objects, they don't, they, they, they won't have the same mass. So, reason for that, well, we've got more red balls in one cube than we have in the other. So in, in other words, we have the same volume, the same space, but the mass that it takes up within that same volume is not the same. And hence, the density between these two objects is completely different. Now, box has more balls, therefore it has more mass per unit within the same volume of space. This property of matter is called density. The density of a material helps to distinguish it from other materials. So since mass is usually expressed in grams and volume in cubic centimeters, density is expressed in grams per cubic centimeter. So these are certain sets of units that we can use. Okay. So G for mass grams per meters cubed. Meters cubed is a measurement of volume. Other units that we can use to measure volume are liters, Milliliters, we can use those. So we can have grams per liter or grams per milliliter, right? We can also have kilograms. We can even have milligrams, depending on how small the object um, that you're measuring the uh, density of is. If you're comparing a metal such as copper with a material such as wood, you are likely to describe the copper as heavier. The physical property that you're describing as heaviness is really the ratio of mass to volume. We don't really want to use heaviness to describe matter. We usually want to use density to measure that kind of heaviness in, with matter. So when we're measuring the density, we're looking at mass to volume ratio. So what is the mass of the object? What is the volume that it takes up? We divide those two numbers and you have what we call the density. Density is a physical property of materials. Each pure substance has its own characteristic of density. You've looked at in the previous chapter uh, the comparison between hydrogen and helium. We know that hydrogen has a smaller density than helium. So it was obvious to think, well, why not fill up, um, let's say, something like a balloon with hydrogen? And if, if it's not for us to look at the chemical properties that it has, like as combustibility, we would never have been able to, um, to, de to decipher the fact that hydrogen is not ideal to blow up a balloon, right? Because it's very explosive as opposed to helium, which isn't. So even though hi hydrogen is, is uh, more dense, um, or sorry, is less dense than, um, than hydrogen, sorry, than helium, we would still want to use helium because of the, the chemical properties that helium exhibits. Density is a very useful quantitative physical property to measure, especially when comparing two metals, uh, you know, similar example, that have the same type of high melting point. Chromium has a melting point of 1,907 degrees Celsius. Silver has a melting point of 961 degrees Celsius. Even though they both have a very high, and even though one is as high as an extra thousand uh, degrees Celsius difference from the other, they still look very similar. And if you don't have the facilities to try to reach and achieve this melting point between these two objects, 
you can always use density measurements to figure out whether the, which object is which. Okay. So different substances have different densities. So if you're chromium, you have a different density than you would be to, to silver, right? We know obviously based on the numbers that I've shown you here that, yeah, you know, one has an even higher melting point. But try to achieve that at home, okay? Try to, you know, get your oven to be at 1,907 degrees as, or even to get it as high as 961 degrees Celsius. Uh, not a, 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 you know, easy feat. So two completely different substances will have different densities. So here's how we'll go about measuring density. The equation for density is the mass divided by the volume. The units for measure for mass are milligrams, grams, kilograms. These are the most common ones that we're going to use. In terms of volume, we might use milliliters, we might use liters, we might use centimeters, cubed, we might use meters cubed, we might even use millimeters cubed. Okay, so these are all volume units that we can use uh, from objects. So we're looking at here maybe solid shaped objects. Here we're looking at maybe liquids. Now, I've rewritten this formula. So you can either memorize this formula, but this formula is useful if you're trying to find just the density. But what happens if you're given the density, you're given the volume, how do you find the mass? And what we've got here is what, we, what I like to call the pyramid method. So let me just clear off some of this stuff here and let's figure out how to use this pyramid method. It's really important if you're gonna use this pyramid method that you identify the letters and you put the letters accordingly in this pyramid or this triangle, whatever method you wanna call it. We, according to this, this equation, we are trying to find the density. So how do you use the pyramid? Whatever you're trying to find, whatever is your unknown, cover it up. Right? So if we're trying to find density, we cover up the density, and we have mass on top of volume, which means density right, is equal to mass over volume. Right? We already know that. I've given that to you, but that's how you can use the pyramid. Now. Let's say, as we said, what happens, as I said here before, what happens if we're trying to find the mass? So the mass is our unknown. So what did we say about the, the, the other time? We cover up the unknown, right? So we cover up the unknown. We're trying to find mass. Mass is equal to, notice how what's left over. We have D side by side to V. When you see the two letters side by side, and that's what you're given, the function that occurs between the two letters is multiplication, which means if I'm trying to find mass, mass is equal to density times the volume. So we can either memorize this equation, memorize this equation, or learn how to use this pyramid. Now, we've figured out how to find the density, we figured out how to find the mass, but what happens if the question ask you, find the volume. We're trying to find, let's say, the volume of an object. So we cover up volume and we have mass on top of density. And there is your third equation. So we've been able to find density, we've been able to find mass, we've been able to find volume. So you have one of two options, memorize all three of these equations, or learn this pyramid rule and learn how to use this pyramid to help you answer all your questions. So let's look at a couple of uh, sample problems. 